announce us? Yes, I will announce us. So this is the uh, July 17th uh, School Board Finance Committee meeting. Uh, the agenda for today is to review Q3 financials um, and then do a debrief on the budget, process, budget development process from last year. Just, should we start with the Q3 financials? Yes, let's do that. Um, so what I have is I had emailed out a draft. I made way too many because I just knew so many people were going to be coming I'm to see with us today. It was weird in our school board meeting this year. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, summer's a, a quiet moment. Um, so what I was starting to say, Sarah, before we got our camera going is that uh, quarter three is, is sort of an odd quarter because here we are talking about it in July, for starters. Every year when quarter three finishes, we're just diving into the budget process. And so like quarter three ends at the end of March, right? So the first week of April, we're all like budget land. And then all through the month of April, we were doing budget, which is normal and usually um, the discussion of quarter three sort of lands somewhere in the middle of that, but it's never really like, oh my gosh, we really need to focus on quarter three because everybody's focusing on the budget for the coming year. This year you throw in the fact that we were doing a superintendent surge and we had a crisis of school buildings at the K2s and so, you know, long story short, completely off the radar. And But for me, what I was going to say earlier is that it's it doesn't worry me that we're not just nailing down everything about quarter three because to me quarter three is the least useless of the use, useful of the quarterly reports. Um, quarter one I love because it helps me clean everything up and see where we're starting at the year. Quarter two, you see, you know, the halfway point is everything trending normally. What's cuckoo? Quarter three is sort of like the threshold of the year end. But it's just, it's a little bit more information than you had in two, and it's not enough information to really know where you're going to land. So, um, you know, not that you don't do quarterly reports, but this is, if you, if you have to have one that you're not spending a lot of energy on, this is the one. And that's very typical every year, mostly because of the budget timeline, but also because of the fact that anything that's um, of great import in this, re in this report, is, you're going to be addressing it in another way anyway already know about it. It's a trend that's been continued from an earlier report or it's something that we're talking about in the context of the budget development. So in my little notes I say, you know, this is this is a, a place where we're actually looking at the whole time that we're doing budget development for FY20. Like half of that process is looking at where are we, what are we spending, what are we spending it on, how are we doing with that, what do we need to do in the FY20 budget to adjust for what we're seeing in FY19. So it sort of becomes a much more organic way of looking at our financial picture when we get to this point in the year. So can you we were going to do any sharing of the financials next week, it would be better to do Q4 if we were, or are those not ready yet? No, and that was the, the second thing that I was going to talk about was the timeline for Q4. And so let's, let me just throw that out there and then circle back. Okay. Quarter four, because of the way you have to close out the books and roll things forward, typically you don't have the luxury of sort of letting everything roll into the following quarter. Um, so like, let's say in December, there's probably bills that you haven't seen yet. On December 31st, they haven't been posted yet because there are the bills for December that you don't receive until January, right? But it doesn't matter because you're going to catch them in the next quarter. Well, at year end, in July and August, we're still getting a ton of bills that relate to the prior fiscal year, so we're posting them backwards. So we typically don't close um, the fiscal year from the perspective of paying invoices back until the end of August. Then in September, we're pulling together reports, we're doing stuff to clean things up and make sure that we know where everything belongs. The first um, school board meeting in October is typically the meeting where I get up and actually do a year-end financial report. Um, you know, give you a nice PowerPoint, take you through um, expenditures, revenues, special funds. Really, you know, almost doing this in a in a live-action version <laughs> with dancing. 
songs. Um, so, but that doesn't happen until the first board meeting in October because that's when we really know where we are. And that's when we need to do, we have action items for the board. We have, and you guys saw this at the very beginning of, I think, at least a couple of you were there um, when I did this last year. Um, you have to vote to do budget transfers. You have to vote to fund school nutrition if the fund is over, um, if the fund's in the red. So there's action items that the board needs to take, and we want to make sure that we're taking those action items once we actually get the record in a way where, where we stand. So it's a little awkward to do quarter three now, knowing that quarter four is going to both contain a lot of the same information and also change. Yep. Um, but it, it, that's not to say that we couldn't do it, and particularly if they're going to look at town and school. Um, because I think what you'd be looking at is you'd be looking at that kind of 10,000 foot um, view of how did things go. You're not going to get real granular and figuring out, you know, well, this account is over and this account, we're going to make these budget transfers. We're not, we're not going to be getting that deep in a conversation with the Joint Finance Committee. It would be more like here are the trends that we experienced, and we, we, here are the places where we've had some issues, here are some places where we've been doing well and we think we're going to have some savings. Um, but it would have to be pretty high level to be helpful, right. and, and yeah, definitely to be helpful. Okay. I'll go back to that. Just well, to and it would be interesting to know if, if, um, if they're also saying, well, sure, the town's going to bring their third quarter report to the table. Um, I don't know, I've not asked Ruth what her timetable has been for doing third quarter. Mm -hmm. I, believe that she usually does quarterly reports with them and it also includes the school at a high level just you know financials in general for the town and I think I think she does them the same way that I do and brings them to a finance committee meeting and talk them through um, so I would be interested to know if they haven't had their third quarter for the yeah. same reasons that we haven't if they haven't had a conversation um, you know, that would be something that would be worthwhile for them and for us. Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes me wonder what what we're trying to accomplish. I agree. Yeah. And that's what I would like to have answered before it's, before before it's officially on agreed. the agenda. It, 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 there's a couple, I mean, there's a couple of issues from my perspective. One is that we have our finance committee meetings, and I certainly don't mind going to both meetings, but... Um, the information you wouldn't want to cover the same ground on both and, and it just feels like that happens a lot and yeah. and I re remember distinctly saying please refer back because all of your questions have been discussed in depth and and of course you're always invited to watch them on TV or attend and, and so yeah. is um, it the best use of our is time it the to best go way? over that same well, ground it wasn't the intent of the meeting either it's just being thrown right. back yeah right. and it's a well, well and, and sort of what is the intent of that that group and collaboration and when should that happen and and, for, and it feels almost like the the maybe the mission is not necessarily shared and I wonder that yeah. at times too and so I wouldn't mind having a conversation about finding that. Yeah. I can go into our next question. Yeah, I mean, I guess the um, and I. Again, I, I certainly have no objections ever to sharing information with whoever needs it, but it, you're right, what's the forum and, and why, what's the actual purpose for that group to be? And I do think that, you know, even today, I think that the budget debrief for me is more critical than this report because I know that this report is not going to be followed up with fresh information and that you guys are going to be acting on it very shortly. Right. So um, that's where I would come out for it. That. So, do you want to just take a quick run through this and then we yes, can yes. have a great process onward? So, this has the same format that you're used to seeing. It has my little story up front on pages one and two. Page three is the general fund financials um, by voter category. Oh, and I have to remember um, to attach the category description to that because I really like doing that before, but I don't sort of generically put it in there. I just have it. As a separate document, so I'll suggest. Did you? Somebody walked on your grave, that's what they said. Somebody walked on your grave? Yeah. Do you want 
you have a grave? <laughs> well, I mean, not that you're using currently. <laughs> no, that's a superstition. Like, yeah, the very All right, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Just being weird. Um, so, yeah, page three is general fund expenditures sorted out by category. And as usual, what you're going to see is the budget, the year to date is the little sort of grayed out section um, in the balance, and then um, two prior years of those category totals and where we were at in the course of the year. And so in my story, I'm saying the uh, end of the third quarter, you're 75% through the fiscal year, you're 73% through the school year. And in most cases, your categories tie out to somewhere in that range within a percentage point or two. Um, and then page four is adult ed and school nutrition. Page five is special funds. And page six is CIP, capital improvement projects. Do you guys remember what meeting it was that we approved? The nutrition. nutrition from the take the high school out from the I think program. It was April. April. Because he, I think he said we're going to go live in May. Yeah, okay. because so it was yeah. it was it's a month to month reimbursement model. So we would have gone through the month of April, submitted the claim, and then starting on May first, we would have taken the um, school nutrition piece out. Um, so yeah, it's not a huge amount of data because first of all, May yeah May is a good month because you've got a lot of school days in it. But June is only a couple of weeks in the high school. Um, the seniors are done, and a lot of even a, a lot of the uh, underclassmen are eating patterns change yeah. at the end of the sure. school year, where it's just like oh I don't want to put any more money in your school accounts. We need to just take the sandwich kind of thing. Yeah. What, what do you recommend for reviewing that sort of as a group? Um, well, I I think we're going to have to figure out what's going to what's going to give us the most bang for the buck. I definitely think that we should have Peter come and talk to us at some point. Um, maybe it's after the first quarter of the year of the school year. So you know, having the kids come back in September and maybe do three months of school year would be the end of the. Well, yeah, and it's the school. Like the this, are yeah, the, the school, the, elder, the school calendar quarters are different, right, from my world. Um, but yeah, I think we, we want to have Peter come in and tell us something about the program itself, and you know what kind of things we're seeing there. But the the school lunch um, system, the financial system that we use, can give us all kinds of interesting reports on sales. And so what I was thinking of doing is just like a year-over-year -year comparison. And so let's say you take the month of September from last school year when the high school was in the program, and then you take September of this year mm -hmm. and see if there's any variance, um, see if there's a difference in, in your sales figures mm -hmm. you know, and, what, and how many kids are participating. Um, yeah. That would be really simple. I think one of the things that Peter said to me um, was a little bit of a concern for him was that there wasn't really enough time at the end of the year to get the word out. Yeah. Um, to say to the students, hey, you know, Brave New World here, guys, and we, you know, we're going to try some different things, and we really want your feedback. And they had already done a lot of work in terms of surveying kids and um, collecting information about what they would like to see. And then, so you know, Peter's hope is, okay, let me just produce that. I mean, now, now that you've told me what you'd like to see, let me offer it to you. Um, but yeah, I think um, I'm not even sure what the timeline for the for an actual sort of story from the high school would be. And I think it would be something that would be cool to be shared with the whole board as well. Yeah. But as far as the sales figures are concerned, we can grab them pretty much any time. I think we should keep sort of them. I'm, I'm assuming you keep one eye on that anyway. It's just to make sure that nothing funky happens as a result. Yes, yes but I wouldn't focus specifically on the high school, and now I would, right? right. Because I would want to know the differences that right. being in the program or not being in the program are going to create for us. Um, so it could be as simple as just me starting a year-to-year, year-over-year spreadsheet. 
um, assuming that our enrollment is, has been pretty steady at the high school, it should be fairly simple for us to say, well, you know, this, this many kids participated and this much was done in sales. Um, and we can look at last year, we can look at two years back. Um, what, do you, what do you think? Do you, do you have a sense of what you'd like to see? I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking to you because I I'm, it, it, it's a brave new world, right? Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's true. Um, I just want to make sure that I guess that, that we're not remiss in, in, in keeping an eye on it. As long as you, you have like, one eyeball on it to make sure nothing crazy happens, then we can do sort of that. Yeah, and, and my, sense, my sense, here. though, is that it's going to be important for us to have like a, a little bit more detail to the data because from my perspective, I tend to look at things in really big numbers. You know, I'm looking for for big and big problems and big changes. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for um, incremental changes, right. um, unless I, unless I have a project that, that makes me want to do that. But this project does make me want to do that, right? Because I want to I want to go in and I want to say, okay, well, you know, September last year, September this year, what's the difference? And maybe we'd be able to pull out um, from the system some of the newer things. That are being offered, and are those things particularly popular, and um, so I'll talk with Peter a little bit about what he thinks um, we could incorporate. Is it possible to find out with him also if he has sort of a plan for marketing, or think if he thinks that's necessary? I know the feedback I got in my household was that they didn't really notice. Know that there was anything different, other than the pasta bar, which was a huge. Yeah. A huge hit, and, yeah. and there was a lot of talk about that, but they didn't really, and, and it could be because, like you said, it was gradual, not, and, not and enough time, not enough time, to, time really to flip the switch, the right? So, yeah, so what we need to know is, like, the marketing scheme, yeah. how do people know, you know, how do you know there's a difference, what's new, um, and then sales figures, and participants participation figures, which isn't necessarily the same thing, right? Um, because you could, depending on what the kids are buying, just, I think it would be nice, just from what I've been hearing, to have more children take part in the program, even if it doesn't generate massive amounts Absolutely. of sales, because what we're saying is that, you know, that, that's a kid that's not going over to the coffee shop or getting chicken nuggets from the kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. We hope that we might be able to keep them in house and keep them eating something. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to incorporate at least the beginnings of a thing into our first meeting in the fall, and then we can kind of go from there and see what we're, you know, how we build on that data, what that information is like, and then I'm sure that it'll come to us that oh well, well I'd really kind of like to see this too, and we can start making making and I'm it sure more robust. Peter has experience presenting all of this to Kate. Yeah, I've successfully implemented yeah. this in the past, so I'm sure that he will even know details that would be relevant to us. That you know, and he'll be prepared to have. Yeah, he would want, yeah. want us to know. Yeah, yes. and it's kind of like when he came with um, Emma and did their their presentation. There was a lot of stuff in there that he had never even mentioned to me that I thought so, mm -hmm. I'll definitely lean on him. Um, so to circle back to our, our friend here, I've got a few variances um, and I don't know if you all had a chance to, to peek at this, but um, they're not going to be super surprising, I don't think. Um, Co-curricular every year, the bulk of it is paid in the fall and then the rest is paid in the spring, so third quarter looks funny. Um, improvement of instruction, we actually had one employee who um, was pretty critical whose position we didn't fill till February. So um, Monique's budget is lacking behind a little bit, lagging behind a little bit there. Um, and then there's also a lot of flux in her budget depending on what professional development she's doing and what new initiatives are going on and how much she's grant funded. So, um, so hers is a little bit lower than what, what we might expect and we may have a small budget savings just because of that position. IT is similar to the co-curricular in that we pay 
half in December and half in um, June. And I actually need to make myself a note because the JT comes from the town, the journal transfer, and I always ask them for it. And we always go, oh yeah, we gotta do that. So we gotta do that. Um, system admin and uh, the system administration budget has the legal account for the whole district. And so we've had um, some pretty high spending in that area. There's also been some professional developments that the professional development experiences that have been charged off on the district wide account that I'm actually going back and looking at right now and saying, well, really this could be split out um, to all the school accounts because they each have a small PD account as well. Um, so there's a little bit of housekeeping to it as well, um, which is another reason why fourth quarter would look a little bit more sensible than third quarter. Yeah. Um, but the legal account is definitely over. And so this is what I was saying earlier about how we use this to inform the way that we build the budget for the coming year. Because you're looking at where are you, what are your costs looking like, and do you have enough in that particular account or that particular category? or do you need to make an adjustment? And so in FY20, that would be one of the lines where I beefed it up and said, no, you know, as long as we've got negotiations going on, as long as we've got these kind of things happening, we're gonna to need to make that a little more robust. You like our lawyers, love them. Love the lawyers. And you know what? In the long run, they say the same. Transportation. Um, so we did a retro pay adjustment in January, so the last, the second quarter, transportation looked low, and then we had the whole collective bargaining thing happen, and everything we went through, and it's all good, and so everybody got their raise, but they got retro pay in January, so that kind of moved everything back up again. Um, and then we also had contracted buses driving regular school bus runs, or a bus each day. Um, was it your son's yes. like, what? There you go. So the custom coach was Fancy our friend. Custom coach every day. Um, so that's not a shock. I think that's right. something we've been talking about all along. Um, and those are the biggies. And then under revenues, I mentioned again the subsidy reduction, state agency client reimbursements. Those are um, students who are called what we used to call back in the dark ages wards of the state. So their, um, their parent and local parentis is, is the state. Um, and at the moment, we only have one or two students who fall into that category. But that just changes um, not by our choice. It changes by groups and work groups out in the community. Um, so that's always a hard, hard one to guess. But it's because we have the bulk of our revenues come from the town of Scarborough, these small changes don't actually impact us hugely. So, I mean, it's good news, bad news, right? We pay the whole bill, so the outside sources of revenue can't throw us off quite so dramatically. Um, so, for adult ed, we've got both expenses and revenues a little bit lower. Um, fund balance is, is healthy. School nutrition, personnel costs for the most part are pushing us a little bit high. Food costs are a little bit high. So I do believe we'll have a deficit in school nutrition. Um, but we have talked about during the budget process that you know it's great that we're front loading that with some, um, some revenue from the town up front. We're not just relying on having surplus at the end of the year making a transfer. But we recognize that we probably weren't all the way there yet, that by putting $200,000 in, it was $188,000 for this year, um, that we weren't going to cover the whole cost of school nutrition. So that's, um, when we get to October, that's one of the things that we'll be talking about. We have fund balance remaining in the general fund, and we're going to transfer it to school nutrition to cover the deficit. Uh, but it will be a significantly smaller deficit because we've already front-loaded some revenues into that fund directly. Um, and then my CIP story, um, I, I was noting that even though CIP, most of our conversations lately have been about the K2s and about modulars and about cool stuff like that, those don't even appear on here because that's all in the FY20 budget, but also um, the money that we would receive from the reserve funds 
in the FY19 fiscal year isn't really represented here um, because it wasn't a budgeted capital project. So I'm thinking about just adding a, a, a line down at the bottom to say, oh yeah, remember the eight corners modular thing? It's not really a budgeted capital project, but it has its own little home here. Um, so I didn't put that on quarter three, but I think for my year-end presentation, I think that we need to represent that someplace yeah, because it kind of came in right. out of right field, right. but there's a left field that it comes in from. But an expense. Let me get my baseball out now. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, and you, you want to see it, right. so, you know, where's that 260K and what are we doing with it, right? Yeah, and do we show that in the revenue line, too, is exactly. that back piece? Yeah, okay. you'd have to, well, yeah, because it's not really general fund, it's, I think it's still a capital project, honestly, it's just that the source of the revenue is different, right. so... So that was like the real fast talkers version of this. Did anybody see anything that we need to um, clarify? Not for Q3. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel about it. It's right. like, here's where we're at. Everything is sort of under our gaze, but not right. um, anything we need to take serious action for just at this point. Um, when you think of how these posts came, I can put this up like. Schools. 
it makes me more enthusiastic. So if, if you know you're preaching in the choir and I'm getting happy about it, I'm sure it's even that much more helpful to somebody who doesn't have that connection. Yeah. So that and um, the other one that I really like and and it would be interesting to hear what you guys say about it is the. Um, workshop that we have with the school leaders. Something. So, don't you think? Yeah. Because I have a, some, somewhat the same uh, feeling about that because I get to sit at the table with my colleagues. I don't necessarily know what they're doing all day long. I mean, I know that we're all busy and we're all doing our thing, but to have them explain something, whatever it may be, whatever topic it is, to have them explain it in depth with their own understanding and you know, their own experience. It's, it's helpful. Again, it's helpful to me, so I feel like it must be that much more helpful to people who aren't. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's funny because obviously this whole year was a learning curve. You know, every single thing we did was brand new. True. So, you know, how, how I would, right, so how I would go into that workshop, this, you know, having done it now the second time, time will be different than how I went into it the first time, and it will be so much more valuable, I feel like. And I have a whole list of things that, like, you know, the first time we did it, it was 90% le right. It was 90% learning how to even, you know, conduct at be at the meeting and be present and be in the room. And then, like, oh, I wish I'd asked this follow-up question, or I wish I had, you know, taken a look at. Do we ask questions? Do we right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and I think it'll be interesting to see going through the second time around. I think you'll find more depth to it instead of it being like, oh my god, I know nothing, it's more like, well, I know this and I know this, but what about this thing? I just don't get, you know. And then you've got the horse's mouth right there. Not I like that we did it in two days. I think that was a big improvement. Keeping the, the two-day format. I can't imagine doing all of that in one day. Yeah, well, it was, you know, we did it, but I don't know that it was as valuable because Everybody by the end of the day was like tapped out, and yeah, you don't have enough room in your brain to hold any more ideas. So another continue. Uh, I would like for Kate and the superintendent to continue to go to the schools and do yeah, those do the staff reach out. Staff reach outs. I thought that was pretty powerful. And have a finance committee member attend as many of those. I felt like that initial touch kind of gave us as a finance committee um, some insight into where the budget process was going to begin and, and what were going to be the priorities, like, you know, as early as January. Right, because in the past, the board has sort of been sitting on the sidelines waiting for that formal presentation. And, you know, I know Julie and I brainstormed a number of thoughts about how to get folks engaged earlier on without making the process so cumbersome that you don't get an end result. You know, and that was a really nice way to do that, yeah. was to have you be able to go sit in the room, hear what people have to say, hear the same things that we do at the same time that we do. Yeah. So I, I don't think I was on finance yet mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. So one of you attended. So the, it was the first time Kate and the superintendent had done that, um, and then Sarah and I kind of jumped in. I think I did two, and you did one. I did three quarters. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't cover, you know, the we didn't cover every one of the sessions, mm -hmm. um, and it was more just. I think initially it was let's have a school board member tag along and see, because we were trying to figure out what it even meant to what, be on the finance committee and. Right. and what the teachers are saying. And what the teachers are saying. Um, and again, like now having had the perspective of gone going through it the first time, like I I feel like I would be able to bring a different perspective, like at the high school when you hear proposals, you know, or you hear what the teachers are, are asking for, it informs like so much more of the direction when they do do the big budget presentation, because then you think to yourself, okay, well one of the themes that I heard you know, loud and clear when I went to the high school was that the science department was overstressed because they were trying to also do STEM. Mm -hmm. And so that STEM teacher for me was a non-negotiable. Right. Right. 
and you were and I heard that right from the get-go. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, Alicia, um, Julie and I just hadn't had time the prior year to go out. It was something we had thought about a few years ago to go out into the school community before we were publishing anything, before we were deciding on anything. And I found it really powerful. We went to each building. The thing that I would work on on that would be to try to encourage a little bit more participation yeah. because at some schools there was a room full of people and they were all super engaged and they all really wanted to be heard and had their ideas. And at a couple of places um, there was you know, two or three people at the table. And so, yeah, it was great for those two or three people and not to discount at all the importance right. of what they had to say, but to get the breadth right. of what's going on across a, a school community, especially a bigger school. So I would definitely like to do that again, and I would like to sort of try to work on the promotion of it, um, or you know, or maybe the timing of it. We talked a lot about we had done it um, at, over the lunch period mm -hmm. during the middle of the day because we figured each teacher at some point during a two-hour span has a break, mm -hmm. and they could come and go, and they could circulate, and we would hopefully give everybody in every staff member, including in text, um, in the building a chance to come in and say, hey. Um, and some in some cases that seemed really successful, especially when we camped out in the lunch room yeah. in their, the teacher's lounge, yeah. <laughs> where they were they had to running get their the microwave. Away. They were like, oh, hey, while you're here. Yeah, just while you're out. Uh, but then at middle school, we did it in the conference room, and they didn't have to Sorry. naturally pass through yeah, there, right. or the computer lab, or whatever that building. Yeah, so I would definitely want to work on the outreach piece to make sure that we get good participation. What if we could get the PTA fund sandwich to bring lunch, lunch to serve lunch? lunch. Yeah. I took an action to review that because I think another thing we can do is go back to that at the beginning of the year and say, this is what we did last year. Here's what we heard you say. It made it into the budget. Just proving that we're listening. So that when we go yeah. and do it again, they don't think that we're full. True. And we could build on the letter that Julie and I sent out to them right after we left. Mm -hmm. We sent a letter to all staff, like as we were walking out the door, was thank you so much. Here's what we were hearing. Um, you know, this many people came and we're so grateful. And yeah. then you're right, if we were to go back to them in September and say, hey, you remember that thing we did? I, these are the trends we heard. Here are some things that actually that you, you directly you influenced. influenced. Yep. Um, so can we add a start to yeah, I have it in there and that well I took an action to to do that as well. Can can you add the word of the PTA about yeah. breakfast or lunch or whatever? Try to try to provide a lunch for people and increase participation. And we can also talk about other times as well. Mm -hmm. um, what we really didn't want to do was to make it a task for somebody to stay after school or come in an evening um, because certainly there are people who will come and engage with us in evening meetings and things but we wanted to make it so that it wasn't creating an extra task if you're right there in the building and you could bring your sandwich to the table you were going to eat it anyway um, you know, let's do that I know that some people that's just not outside their comfort zone. So I'm oh, sure more yeah. it can be about their routine. I think you can draw some of those people. Yeah. yeah. And, but there were people sitting quietly nodding too, you know, where you might have somebody who was very vocal or very articulate about what it was they were trying to say, but there might have been two people at the table sitting by them going, yeah, me too, but they didn't have to be the one saying right. more. So that can help as well. You sort of get the sense of is this like what the group is thinking, right? Do you have anything else for that? Do you have anything else for um, I had a couple. Um, Kate, I think the way that you presented the that document that we all have, like oh, oh my gosh, that yes. we have now, yeah. that shows like the investments, or sorry, the need, and then here are the investments. I think the life saver. So you mean the investment? Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is this like is my most yeah. favorite. What did she call it? It says. I mean, 
mean, this this is just the first. It's the, like, I mean, it's the budget right? Yeah. Well, it's the, um, what do you call this? Oh, I don't, I don't know what I call it. Julie calls it, you know, the chart, the thing. <laughs> She's the one who invented it. All credit to her because I represent things in eight hundred different ways, and I never know what's going to resonate. So, um, but I would say um, I would call it like the investments term. Invest that's really what it's about. I would call it investment proposal because you see the like you see the base budget in so many different ways. But it takes the base budget, but it but it also has the piece about um, level services and then reductions and ads and yeah. If we call it the investment, call it the chart. Chart. <laughs> there we go. Um, yes, I wholeheartedly second continue the magic chart of colors. Well, yeah, I found it really helpful too because you can see as you're making your decisions what impact it has on the bottom line. At least the school's bottom line. It can't be the whole picture, but um, you know, it's it's almost a little bit like shopping thing up and for only three thousand dollars more you can have exactly. unified basketball <laughs> so i have a couple small in here one which is a no-brainer is just to record all fc meetings we yep. didn't start to do that until later but i think having on there would be a reminder um and i know that space and time is always a constraint yeah i do think we should have them yeah, we should yeah, start like where where possible have yeah. them in chambers. Yeah. Um, and the um, supporting documents as well. I really think that that's a good resource. Well, and I think people have gotten used to at least I hope they have in, in the agenda that's on the website for the for the board, knowing that they can go back and see. Yeah. Um, or look at documents that were presented and they'll be posted up there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, whenever we have meeting notes and things like that, or, or supporting documents, making sure that we've got them up there. And we're lucky because we have you, so you can post things pretty Yeah, I have access to page. most of the pages, um, although they, they made it a little bit new and improved in the past couple of months, and I got a little lost. <laughs> it's okay, I'll catch up. So I have this under continue, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. And Mine was just around keeping, basically to address all the questions that board members had and questions that we got from emails. We created mm. that spreadsheet. I like that. Yeah. When Julie went in, kind of having the archive yeah, once, of, sort of. Did you guys find that helpful though? Because the the drawback of that is Amy sent questions. You know, it, we probably didn't respond to any of these questions until two months later. I don't think it impacted any decision that she made, but that's just it's slower. Right. But and you but you could. You could have the best of both worlds too, because if there was something that was a pressing issue that was going to lead you to take an action in one direction or another, it could be, you know, I need a response for this, but then you'd still want to archive it. Yeah. And I think we did that in a, in a sense, we did that with some of the emails that we got from citizens where we'd answer the email, but then we'd also save the answer mm -hmm. in the document so that the next person needed to know the answer to that question. It, it becomes like an FAQ, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think definitely just this idea that we would continue this living document of questions, board questions, community questions. Yeah, and I, I look back um, when we did the budget forum, which was the community meeting where we all, all of the school and town leaders gathered at the high school, and I think we did it at one point from here, and we all sort of sat there and fielded questions from the audience, which we stopped doing because we felt like then you've got one event, one night, during the whole budget season, when only the people who managed to show up at that event can ask their questions. Um, but the, the value of that was that later on we went back and we did take questions online and we captured answers and kept them in a document. Um, and of course, if you look back at those, then you know at least half of them are similar to what people are asking us today, and we'll ask us again next year. There's a lot of things that are you know, time sensitive in that particular budget cycle, but there's a lot of things that keep recurring in people's minds as a question. I was gonna, I was wondering what, it, and 
so it sounds like you're familiar with that. I was wondering what the process would be to have the public submit a question. Like, is there a way you could just sort of put a, um, a little link or a question mark up? Yeah, and this is like two two decades ago, <laughs> two websites ago, but. Um, there was a, it was on the uh, town website and there was a little thing you could click on and you could type in your question, like a live chat kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, only it wasn't monitored, it was captured and then it was dumped into a spreadsheet and then it was farmed out to the different departments and people could answer the question. Um, but I, I definitely think a, a live element of response is there a button? Is there a button or anything like that on the budget portal? Um, I don't think at the moment there is. I think it's always been linked to like the process. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to have a, a workshop, so you can submit mm -hmm. something in that time frame. And I'm and I'm, survey. Uh, and I'm sort of thinking ahead about our questions about the budget out outreach and, and what what the thoughts are with continuing that and after looking at some thoughts about whether that should continue at least at that scale. And so my, my thought is... Is there an electronic element to that that, that we could leverage? Solicit yeah. input. Yeah. Well, and you have two pieces to that community outreach, remember, because you get the listening sessions before, mm -hmm. same as the you know, staff, school staff ones, and then you've got the, here's what the budget is afterward. Um, you know, I, I hear a lot of appreciation from the people who were able to do those sessions, but I don't know again that you know how many people are reach? actually able to take advantage of those times or places. Um, so yeah, having a, a different, easy access way to get their thoughts to us. Can you remind me where we stored that? Was that just available to us? Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, there's two. There was one that was about four questions. There was an Excel spreadsheet that was just available to us. And there was one that was like any question that we got from uh, anybody in the community mm -hmm. turned into like a Word doc and that, but that was published. I think we put that, that out was in published. Like, it was linked to an agenda. On the agenda. Okay. It, well, I don't know what it was. I don't think we updated it. Yeah, and I, I think maybe what what we could think about doing is it's, it's sort of a a housekeeping task, but to find like an archived FAQs, create a section someplace that's easy to go to. They took the whole budget portal down before they put it back up again last year to this year. So there was a lot of stuff that sort of, you know, background documents and information that sort of wandered off into an archive somewhere. So we would want something, and maybe we keep it on our own finance committee page that says, you know, here's some cool budget stuff about the schools. Yeah. We want to make sure that it's somewhere that doesn't like accidentally get updated out of existence. Do people? It's so interesting to me how many people talk about the budget, but I just wonder how many people actually read it. Yeah. Access that. Or ask their questions. How they get the numbers from their side. It would be interesting to know because again, it's a, it's it's that access the communication piece. Like if you're reaching, you're putting all this effort into reaching 20 people or 200 people or 2,000 people. Um, you know, you want to be able to assess that. Like where are we putting our energy? Right? Yeah. Cool. That's all I have for continue. Do you guys think of anything else? We didn't really say anything about um, the collaboration with the Town Council Finance Committee. We can see that. I think that's a bit of stop. Okay, cool. <laughs> Topic for next week. <laughs> uh, stop. So mine's not, mine's not really a stop. Mine's like a assess, assess the value added and that is what we were just talking about, about the outreach meetings. Um, and I'm not sure it's, just, I don't think it's a stop. I think it's something that we need to do in some format, but maybe it's a tweak 
a change that um, allows more people to take part. Particularly, it sounded like in the you know the later episodes, you had the same people coming who had their thoughts or agendas that they wanted to share, and you know God bless them for wanting to do that. But is that really serving the purpose of the outreach meeting when you're really trying to cast a wide net and hear what more of the community has to say? So, not a stop necessarily, but a, you know, an assessment of how we can get the most bang for our buck with those. How many total attendees were there? Unique attendees? Well, that was going to be my right. second question. Right. Yeah, because those are different I mean, numbers. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. Do you, April? I don't off the top of my head. I mean, I, I think I only missed the... Eight Corners Fire Barn one, and if I was gonna, and that one did actually have a higher attendance. Um, the Wentworth one was the most unique to me. Oh, yeah, I didn't go to that one either. Okay, okay so I was to any other. other. Yeah. It was a time of day thing, I think. Yeah, Saturday at 10 a.m. Yeah. yeah. It was like, you know, eight people there. So I did Dunstan Fire Station. Oh, you did that one. And there were. No more than ten. ten. I mean, ten is very general. Yeah, and see, that's my worry is that yeah, you know, not more than forty. I would think you, oh, yeah. you might have fifty people all told, and and some of them are repeats. Yeah. And so, you know, not that it doesn't serve a nice purpose to speak to those fifty people, but it's sort of the same way that I feel when I get in a conversation with a citizen, and I'll have a great half-hour conversation with someone on the phone, and we'll walk away, both of us feeling so great about the budget, but that was one person. Yeah. And you know, if I could speak to everybody in the community, then that would be cool. But is it is it possible for us to do it more efficiently, or um, get the PTA to do so much? <laughs> exactly. I'll ask Larissa if she can have those numbers for me next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Leanne also had that as her in one of hers as well, actually. It is a shame. I, I wish we could figure out what the formula is to make those more um, successful in the sense that we were really getting some great attendance because they are very fulfilling. Like right. I, I never came away from any of those sessions thinking, oh, that was a waste of my time. Right. But you know, it's a question of like scalability, right? Six. Yeah. 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 Scalability. I wondered. Um, I know uh, sometimes in the past when we've, we've taken the show on the road, I don't know that this was the era of, of any pre-budget listening, but the after-budget outreach piece, one of the things that people tried to do was to tag team onto existing community meetings. Yeah. Like the Rotary Club is meeting, so you go to their meeting, or you go down to Pike Shores and they're having a community meeting, or you go to a place where people are already gathering. Um, and I know this team has talked about things like, well, you know, there's a parent night at Wentworth, right? right? And there, or there's a concert, or things like that. Um, and I feel like there's some, some, um, some more weight to be gathered from those times when people are already All going right. to school to yeah. do a thing. Yeah. Then I'm also sort of feeling that would we just be really <laughs> Are we that person with the table in the hall? Right. It's well, I also talk to me, please. I also worry about targeting specific groups. Um, Meaning, like, if you just happen to hear from the parents of a one with kid in a concert, yeah, versus, or yeah, or you know, just the rotary group, or you know, and and it's how do you ensure that you provide the equal opportunity? Sure. To, a diverse group. Yeah, absolutely. But and it's always guys, so ironic to me because it's outreach. I mean, there's it's a dual responsibility in, in, in my mind. Yeah, when well, you can't make people come. Right, right. right. So, so I mean, except for the sandwiches. I mean, we have <laughs> we have all these conversations every time, even when we're just scheduling them, because it's do we always hold it at the same place but vary the time? Or do we try and go right. to different places and vary the right. time? Or do we keep the time the same but go right. to, because we're trying to make ourselves available 
and obviously like there are you know citizens who don't like to drive at night so evening ses sessions don't work but if you are if you both you know parents have a full-time job then you know the likelihood that they can come to a 10 o'clock at the library is you know slim to none and so like it's but then but then you run the risk of nobody ever knowing where or when these things are mm. because we bounce well you know we came along all around yeah. town and then and then I think well it seems like people are very willing to participate when there's a social media um, portion because mm -hmm. I think it's because of ease of use but then you're limiting your audience to just those people who are, who are comfortable using social, social media, media. Yeah. and okay. that that's limiting your demographic as yeah. well. It's the, it's the breadth of attracting more voices mm -hmm. that's always a challenge because even if you had some magical platform that included every citizen in Scarborough, then you have another self-selecting piece of the people who are busy and don't really care about the budget or, you know, I'm sure they care, but they don't, it's not their priority. Um, so even if you make it the most accessible event or time or you know, method, you're still going to have people that aren't going to be participating. So it's it's sort of like growing the participation, not hoping that you'll get everybody, but right. hoping that you can get more and that you can get more var varied. I do like the idea of, um, well, when we did candidates night, Kevin solicited uh, questions from the audience. I do like the opportunity for people to, the idea of the people, right, so the the card. Or, or send it in like through live chat, through social media, or through email or something. Yeah, have the ability to have their question asked. And we did that when we had the one-time budget forum too. It was, you know, submit your question and we'll respond to it at the event, but we also would put it in writing afterwards. Yeah. So if we were able to fold that kind of interaction into the outreach, you know, even if you went to Dunstan Fire Station and you only actually sat and talked to five people, if you had 20 people who sent you a question that you could discuss at that table, and then we didn't record those, though. They were just like, a, maybe we need somebody with an ink cam. You could do them live on Facebook with a with an ability to submit questions. It's very millennial. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that's a really good idea, though. How does it feel, Sarah? <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, why not? I, I, I like the idea of just feeling like at least then it's really generally open to the public, even yeah. to, despite any scheduling. Well, it's the same reason that you want to have this meeting taped. It's the same mm -hmm. reason that you want to have people able to go back and look at it when they get a chance mm -hmm. to. If you're worried that that person can't be there at that particular time on that particular day at that place, and we're able to get people to pay attention to the fact that, that they could look at it in another way or participate in it in another way, that could be helpful. It's good, yeah. That was a long sort of stop that wasn't a stop. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, do better. Yeah. Stop, stop, tweak. stop doing it wrong and do it right. <laughs> what else for stuff? Man has um, stopped defending personal liberals, being questioned. It's not personal on the board. Sometimes they've asked hard questions. So the context would be like if you're wondering about a position in the budget. I think the context is it gets awkward when we are trying to ask questions and there's only three people in the district who hold that role. Mm -hmm. Sure. So then it feels personal because right. we need to assess, you know, their impact on student learning right. and we're literally talking about you know, an individual. Identifiable. Exactly. Individual. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's oh, so I understand her point, but at the same time. I think it's part of its comfort too. Mm -hmm. They're all new. Yeah. Didn't really know. I think trying to like figure out what our role was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think now we're all comfortable with that. Maybe some of us were already comfortable with that, but I wasn't. <laughs> um, well, I think you're right. There's always going to be, I mean, we already know that 
75% of our people, our budget is people. So if we're talking about hard decisions, X over Y, there's a good chance we're talking about a human being in there somewhere. And um, so, you know, it's at least it's not talking about riffing positions laying people off, which was some of the conversations that we've cheerful ones we've had in the past about who's more important. You know, are we gonna get rid of the French teacher or the PE teacher? And those were actual life human beings who weren't gonna get a contract. So I mean it's it's the the nature of what we're budgeting. I mean, I did originally have on my list that we should stop working towards a 3% goal, but I think I'll, I'll change that into a positive start and somehow. Um, look at other ways to achieve like other goals instead of relying on them. Yeah, yeah. I think you, if you phrased it on the positive side, um, start looking for a replacement for the... Yeah, I mean, I have significant The benchmarking. With trying to hit a 3% goal when we only control one portion of that equation. I just don't think it's an effective benchmark for us to use as a board or you guys as staff when we have no idea what the town's portion of the overall tax ask is going to be. And, and we, so to we suggest that we do or don't meet the goal, you know, that's I don't I have like to control over the valuation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I think that okay, that's a start. This is the time where we should be having those conversations with the town. Yeah. yeah. Not so close to the budget development process and and really delineating what the expectations are. I mean, I I felt like it was pretty clear, but maybe because it was so close temporally to, to the budget that it got lost sort of in all of the stress and chaos. I really would like to see the development of that goal be more collaborative Agreed. and more firm and and articulated and publicized better. I'm hoping that that's the outcome of the near and future joint finance committee meetings, that, that we need to, they need to hear as a town finance committee that the school finance committee is not happy with the current benchmarks that we're using to try and build our budget. And that is a message that, you know, I think the three of us certainly feel really strongly about and I think we speak for the whole board. And so how how we communicate with that that to them and the importance of finding a, 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 a more equitable way to make sure that it is a collaborative and joint process. And let's just point out the timeline I think is, is huge because it was at the table with the town council finance committee, or the town council themselves, where they were setting this target and counselors were saying, isn't it a little late in the day because you know, the town manager and the superintendent have basically written their budgets and now you're saying, oh, by the way, here's a target you need to meet. So I think that was unusual this year because I do think that uh, the council has been earlier in that process, but that doesn't make the process any more valid either. Right. I think they had counselors who wanted to change the process, but because we were learning and the learning curve was steep, they got a later start on trying to change the process. True. And, and it kind of got out ahead of them before they realized, like, oh, our opportunity to change this in a time So for, for timing of that, it, I guess I would envision, I'm trying to think of how we could effectuate change. It's, it seems to me that we would need to, as a group, sort of identify something that we think would work for us, yeah. present that to the full board maybe, and see if they agree, and then try to schedule a, a joint meeting and then ask them to present that to their full council mm -hmm. 
to try to avoid any surprises and to try to get a collaboration, a full collaboration, if, if that's possible. I think next week will be really pretty telling because it's your point. If we go in there and we say, so this is one of our biggest like things that we need, we need to look at that we don't agree with. And so an action item coming out of that meeting for us is to do exactly what you just said. But if they're like, oh, hold on, we think 3% is fine, then we're, we already know that we're right disconnected. And I don't think that they will say that, but I also don't know, I haven't heard that anybody has any other solution. I certainly don't. I don't know if it's not If it's not the 3%, then what then is then it? Is what is, yeah. And I don't think the goal of next week's meeting should be to define that, but at least to get everyone agreeing to that we want to do we something, something different. different. Well, I'd like it to be more collaborative. Well, and, and, yeah. I mean, or or have some input. The goal setting or the budget development. The the, the goal setting of the goal. The goal setting. setting the goal. Yeah. 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 And there, yeah, there you find that you're doing this sort of dance of we're all at the table together solving problems, and then oh wait, no, on this thing, let's just make it so we tell you to do mm -hmm. it. So we had a few conversations that were a little uncomfortable when we were sitting with the town council finance committee because there was that sort of confusion about are you the boss of us or are we all sitting together at the table right. working this out? Yeah. Um, so I mean, I think if you address that elephant in the room and say, so what is this relationship and how do y'all see it? And you know, if it is, we're just going to tell you what to do. Okay, cool. Thanks for letting us know. But aren't we kind of sitting at the table together to find a different way? Right. And it's hard, and from my perspective, it's hard to advocate at this point for something when we don't, you know, as a group, we haven't identified any alternatives. And I, I think that, you know, I'm not going to rule out the, the possibility sure. that we could come up with some good ideas. And acknowledging that the 3% target is easy to understand, it's simple, it's basic, it seems rational, but there's no strong reason objectively why that is it and why we couldn't try to brainstorm some other ways to come at it. It's also inaccurate. It's not what it usually ends up being. Well, there's that. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's we're campaigning on something that we don't actually know whether or not it's true, but by history will tell us that it's actually less, less, less. much less. Well, right. but, but I mean, there's also the whole, like, is it, what is your idea of 3%? I mean, because there seemed to be a lot of confusion about that as well. I heard counselors saying- gross on expenditures. Yeah, on the tax we rate. told you 3%. Oh, right. yeah. You said 3%. I thought that that was the mutual collective goal, not right. the school's goal. And the school department, um, you know, from my understanding, and 20 years of research, will never hit a 3% expenditure increase. So you can't do that with your fees. Right. Um, you know, that doesn't mean everybody gets a 3% raise every year, <coughs> right. but it means that benefits are going to go up. Right. And it's more than 3% in most cases. So our 3% has never been 3% increase on expenditures. That's never been the way that we've done. Unless we laid off 20 people, which is probably not the version we really want to go in and fairly strong. So far. All right, cool. What else we have? What's the role of, of Paul Johnson to the school committee? Um, so that's an excellent um, question in terms of we. As the town council assigned him as school board liaison, and then we countered and assigned myself as a town council liaison, and Paul and I have kind of been making up that role, I think, as we've gone along. Um, essentially, if I feel like there's something going on or a fellow board member contacts with me, connects with me about something that's going on on the board that they feel is important to share with the town council, that if history has taught us, you know, they don't always catch all of our meetings or they don't, um, you know, always have the most up-to-date information, then I pass that along to Paul and he presents it to the town council at a, at a full council meeting. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I put down that I would like to see is that we uh, not suggest, but we, I guess we're 
required that the, at, at a minimum, the finance committee members of town council attend the, the leadership council workshop sessions the workshop. in those two days. Yeah, they've always been invited, and it depends on who's been a member of the committee, whether they've been able to attend or whether they have chosen to attend. But, I mean, it, it does stand to reason that if you want to be making clear evidence-based decisions as a counselor, that would be such a great opportunity. And that's what the counselors who have attended in the past have said, you know, oh, this was so helpful. Well, I guess, well, to, I'm trying to make sure that I have, like, my own um, outline of how they do conduct themselves. Like, they, at no point, aside from when the superintendent presents the school budget to them, they don't do a deeper dive into the school budget. And there's all this gray area about whether they're whether or not presenting on that level would give them the impression that they then had line item authority over certain investments. So that makes, like, I just want to make sure we have really clear, defined boundaries. And I don't know that even as a governing body of seven that they all share the same definition of those boundaries. Yeah. Maybe that's not the way to go about it, but where that came from is, to me, what we get out of those sessions is the need. We, I, we, we can leave those sessions and fully understand the need. And whether like the amount doesn't really matter, it's like, why are you asking for what you're asking for? What's the problem we're solving? Exactly. What's and, the challenge you're facing? And I think, and this is the problem with all you know, PowerPoint presentations, like the budget proposals that we give, they're just long. They and, are, and, and they're high, high level. And they're high level. and so. So, so how do we balance that? Because then we get, oh, we get a lot of the same questions over and over again, and we're like, oh, God, we've covered this. Mm -hmm. But to your point, do we actually want to do that deeper dive? I don't know. So I think, I think you can um, receive that information that, that is shared in the Leadership Council without thinking that they now have line item authority. Right. Really what we're just saying is you come to these sessions because you're not going to get a deeper dive into what they so it's going to be your best way of... Then we can actually have to have an argument with you about what, you're why at, we're spending on form. Because you know exactly what I know. Because it did feel so, like we, we were... And I don't know if this is just a perception or reality, but like, it felt like we were doing so much work. Yeah. And that was not reciprocated. And we were constantly educating and educating and educating. And that's not fair. Yeah. But, uh, but, but I mean, I think you know, maybe are bad to some extent as well because, you know, sort of engaging in that conversation is leading, is leading to the, that impression that that authority exists. And so I, th I think that it was partially the dynamics that we were all sort of getting the experience and, and without parameters in the beginning. I, I share some of April's concerns, but I also felt the, the frustration that you felt um, uh, during some of those meetings. Well, it's interesting to try and compare the school department and the town council's role in our budget overview and, and the review that they do compared to some of the other town departments. Mm -hmm. You know, because we're certainly, I mean, our budget because it's what gets put out to the voters, you know, is so much more, you know, scrutinized and, and, and communicated, and, and so much more everything. It's yeah. more everything. Right. And because you have a separate body of administrators yeah. who are only responsible for sharing that information. Right. Because so I just, it's, it's, there is no uh, equivalency, you know, for what the, what public safety presents versus what the school department presents. You know, it doesn't, we didn't advocate for those kindergarten teachers, you know, in the same way that the police chief advocated for his firefighters. We didn't, we didn't have that opportunity, but if they had come to the leadership council meeting, then absolutely they would understand the need. And I totally 
When they did the, the, the town department presentation, I can't remember who, was it just you and Julie who presented on behalf of the schools, or were there other leadership council members? I thought there were other leadership council members. That was the meeting we did. Yeah, it was like great. Remember that I opened with that like speech, mm -hmm. and that was that was like supposed to be what that was was us presenting the budget to them. When we, we had talked and said like, there's no point in really doing this because we've already done it like seven times. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing, there's no new information to share. Right, and, and I I think that the um, yeah. Well, when you think about public safety coming and sitting down at the table and talking to the town council finance committee, they didn't even do that this year. They only had departments come who had some new thing or some different thing or something that they that the town council finance committee felt they wanted more information about. Um, in the past, they've had like each department had their hour and they would come in and do a little story. Um, but Sarah's right. I mean, the school department's already presented to the school board, to the public, to uh, the, with the leadership team to the school board. So there's, you know, these are all things that the, the town council doesn't see from their other departments. So to say that, you know, as a councilor we, we, or a council finance committee member, we demand that you come to our workshop. Um, well, you know, but it's it's funny because in the past, members of the town council finance committee have willingly and gratefully come to the workshop and found it extremely valuable. So, you know, I don't know that you can say, darn it, you have to come do this. But if there's a way to express to them that this is such a good value added for them in understanding the budget process from the school side, um, I think, um, I know, uh, I can think of Jean Marie Katarina has been at the table with us and asked a lot of interesting questions. I know Bill Donovan did it at least a couple of years. Um, Chris Gazzo did it. Um, of course, he was on school board too, so he was familiar with the process. But um, I can't think who else. I think Peter was a part of one. Okay. So, you know, the, anyone who has come to it has said, oh, that was so helpful. I feel like this, they, they received this document, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I thought that they had a really good understanding of the, our needs and why. I, I felt as though at the end they, they got to that place where they really understood that. Um, it kind of goes to your um, comment about, like, we said that, we did that, we've told you this, and now we're telling you the same thing again, and if you would only just been available to listen to these other four times we said it, you wouldn't have this wonder, and you know, I'm sure it's frustrating for you too, because you're wondering this thing that you don't have to wonder. Mm -hmm. So it's it's about efficiency of delivering that information. A lot of the, a lot of that presentation, I mean, I feel is really redundant, and and perhaps necessary, but it does feel like we present the same information. The one that when we go to the finance committee, or the well, one when we you just you sort of just outlined the sort of the steps of that information being presented, right. and it did seem like to me, at least as a finance committee member, that it was presented a number of different ways and, and different times yeah. that I heard the same information. Because yeah, it was in the town council, it was at our. Was that the full board meeting, the town council meeting, and then the finance committee meeting, the workshop, workshop? I'm sure that there's an effect of, you know, of course everybody should know this because I've been living it for the last six months. I mean, I still, sure. I have to sort of stop myself and say, oh wait, no, you don't know that. Um, but I do think there's room for a certain amount of efficiency in delivering the information, especially if you have really quality opportunities for people to learn things. Then if they can take advantage of those, you're, you've got a shortcut to understanding, and you've got you know a little bit of a fast forward maybe through spending time in another meeting talking about well, what the heck's going on with this because you already know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally don't disagree with you. Yeah, and I think we can phrase that in a just a way that next week where we just say that this is an incredible opportunity. It's such a great meeting. value yeah. added for you. And I just think of like the, the special education budget. If they were in the sessions, they were in instead of hearing from us, they hear from Allison directly, and she's I mean, much more educated and eloquent speaking about it than, than I am. Um, and so. But it's
it's an interesting thing that you're trying to accomplish by that. And and I, I respect it, and in some ways I think it's necessary, but it, it's almost like we want them to have more information so that they can be informed and we assume that they'll then yes. respect our values. On the other hand, we also are saying, but hands off, you, you that's not information that's relevant in making your decisions. And so, I don't see, I don't to, me it's, it, to me, it's sort of an interesting I don't balance. see that it, I think it is relevant. Well, I think what you hope is that they'll be sitting in the room with you hearing the things that you're hearing that are influencing your thoughts about the budget and that the, they will, in the end of the day, agree with you and understand why you're asking for what you're asking for. Yeah. And so there is a presumption that they'll hear what you heard and think that it's important. And maybe they don't. But, but right. But also, but also, we're saying. But if you don't agree with us, it doesn't. You don't have the authority to determine to make that determination. And so that's the part that's just sort of that interesting. Yeah, follow, I feel like that follows us around. Right. You like can't. You can't say don't hire more special exactly. ed teachers. But because but you can say, say right. I'm going to take two hundred thousand dollars out of your budget. Right. And I'm going to say that I, I'm coming up with that number because I think it represents some of those special education. Right. It's, right. Oh, it's just yeah. so. It, to me, it's so less weird. about getting to the bottom line and more about coming along in the process with us. Mm -hmm. And so that they, so because if they disagree, now we can have an honest conversation about why they disagree because they understand they are the same thing that we are the same. It's thing. not an arbitrary. It's, except that should we be should we be engaging in that debate? I mean, I'm not sure that. I mean. Maybe you want to because you want to try to bring them over to our side, but if they don't have the, that authority, then I'm not sure that that's a conversation that we should be engaging in. I guess, yeah, and the other way I see it is they're going to take out what happened last year. They made a decision, and they said, yeah, without, let's just assume that they, you know, they didn't go through that process, they didn't have as much information as we had, and they still made a decision. And, I would feel more comfortable about whatever decision they make if it's based off of what we actually need and they're saying, we hear what you actually need, we just cannot. We disagree. We Or we just can't, we have to cut it at $200,000 and we know that's going to hurt you in some areas, but we're, we've come along with you for the, for the run and they're compassionate about it, but they still say we need to cut it to $100,000 instead of just being like, you cut $200,000, we haven't done any research, we have no idea how it's going to impact you. That's not what's up. And that's what I'm really hoping that our goals are finding. We yeah. Can, we're finding. So. Well, and I would point out that I've had town councilors, I've heard town councilors say, we want a list of what the impacts would be if we do X, Y, and Z. That's something that's come up in the past of, you know, well, if we did cut it by 200000 what would you do? <laughs> well, and that's why I think this is such a great thing. Um, because that builds it for you right off I mean, the it back. really does. It yeah. says, you know, if you feel like the school budget needs to be cut by $100,000, here's our list of priorities, and you are go. able to look at these priorities and see where our future investments are. You know, where and the, the only way that that wouldn't be how it ultimately turned out would be if this team said, you know what, this really has to stay here, so we're going to wiggle something else to get that to happen. Certainly, we did a little bit of that too. Oh. Um, I think you're right, though, and I think what a, and we don't need to solutionize this. But it depends on what, how we define the relationship. If we define yeah. the relationship yeah. with them as yeah. they're just going to tell us, then no, they don't need to be on that leadership council meeting because it doesn't matter because yeah. they're just going to tell us anyways. Mm -hmm. And so why why pretend that it's this partnership when it's not? But if they truly are saying we want this to be a partnership, mm -hmm. then I do think that. That's an opportunity when they could educate themselves. Yeah, so I agree. Yeah, cool. Well, I think we're both right. I mean, I think, yeah. I, I think there's value behind that if it's received, yeah. right? If it, mm -hmm. if it's, a, yeah. Cool. But, well, did we? I wanted to ask. Did we ever? Uh, I know Sarah, you and I talked about it, and this is kind of a a, a key question, but about getting more detail behind the light items, and did we ever resolve that? For, for expenditures, for, for expenditures, just well, I mean, athletics. I think was that was the one of the topics that we went into. Was like, you know, if you looked at um, 
athletics contract with services, yeah. there'd be a whole list of you yeah. know, football officials and ice time and hockey and all of that. Um, some accounts are like that and some really aren't like that. So the, the information is there. I think we want to sort of parse out what's the most valuable, what's included in each line. Um, it's part of what we do with the leadership team. So, for example, um, if I'm sitting down with uh, Diane Meadow from the middle school and I'm looking at the lines that she has authority over, we're actually going line by line and we're looking at, okay, when you're in structural contract good services, well, we have this software for math and we have this thing that we do for social studies and you know, we're, we're literally going through each expenditure for that line and then, well, what about your books? Well, this year we're doing science and you know, here's what we're going to need. So there's that level of detail going on as it's being built. Mm -hmm. um, so then I guess, I guess the question would be, knowing that you have so many hours of the day to absorb this, how do we present that extra information so that it doesn't take over your life, well, is it but it's there if you need is it. Is it relevant? Do we need it? What, I mean, what? What are our thoughts about that? I, I, what, what triggered it for me recently was going through the warrants and I was sort of looking at the, the detail and thinking, this is interesting, I wonder where that comes from and what, you know, that type of thing. And then I'm thinking, well... well especially this time of year when you're seeing all the renewals for right. stuff like right. power school and right. we have a membership in this, we pay it all. Right. And that the July ones are quite informative in terms of the system stuff that we're setting up for the year. Yeah, and so, and then, and then how much of that do we should we get into, would we want to get into, those types of things. And, and so that was just sort of a, a question I had. And it's, I think, a group question, just a group discussion. Well, it, it varies from uh, school leader to school leader, too. I mean, depending on the phase of the department, people store that information for themselves differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people will just be like, oh, yeah, I just go in Munis and I look at what we spent money on and I print it out and I know that I'm going to have this again next year, so I dump it in a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the kind of stuff I do. Uh -huh. um, some people will have like a binder that says, well, here's what the art department needs and here's what the PE folks need and here's what we spent the money on. Um, so there's, there's different ways that people are capturing that information to build the budget in the first place and then to track it afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a question of sort of how would you um, gather that and make it accessible to the finance committee without it just being, you know, yeah, ridiculous. right? Well, it's just interesting to me as I'm looking at sort of these line items and we're making, having discussions about numbers. It's, I mean, we really don't have any idea of in there and so and so yeah that's that's interesting to me and then I look at the warrants and I'm thinking well are there efficiencies that could be made I don't I don't know and so sometimes I feel like it's going through the motions the finance committee because we're at such a high level that I don't know if, I don't I don't know well to some extent you're taking my word for it and you're taking the word of the people who were spending the money for it. Right. Um, so I guess that's nice. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but I guess it would be interesting to maybe try to workshop something like that in this group and say, okay, well, what, what would be helpful to us? Like, for example, if we wanted to just spend a conversation for half an hour about what's in, uh, just for the sake of conversation, what's in the contract and services line for the district-wide system administration account. Well, okay, we have this and this and this and this and this, this is what's in here. Um, and we could do a sort of a sample, like a, a an example of how you would go about translating what you're spending now to are we going to do that again next year, how are we going to budget for it, so that you get a little bit of that underlying um, technique of building the budget in one line item. And I just picked that one out of the air. But if there was one where you were, you know, interested in a particular type of spending, you know, 
Well, it's so funny because I get so many detailed questions about my budget, and I have no idea about that level of detail. Why? Why are we spending money on this? Why are you know? Why aren't we spending money on this? And and it feels like you know I feel a responsibility to know that information. But on the other hand, how how could I? Why on earth would we know? Why would what I? The, how could I? Right. What the. Well, yeah. budgeted amount for pencils and crayons is right. in kindergarten right. at Pleasant Hill. And I mean, like, you're a full-time like, in there. employee, a specialist, <laughs> right. and I'm sure and that I'm sure that exact amount is for pencils at, at, right. at Pleasant Hill, because I can't be that detailed, right. and you know, nor can you. I mean, right. you have the one person who emails you about that one person's idea, and then you have another different person who has a whole other set of right. questions. And you have to be the globalist, right? The person who actually is overseeing all of it. And the global part, I guess, is, is just the part that's interesting to me because it, even that, it's. And, and you're right. Maybe it is that we rely on you who gets your information, you know, and it sort of trickles down. I think it, it, is is that the best way for us to get the information? Maybe is the real question. I think one of the things that's critical for us, uh, and any finance committee forward is to really like have a, a really good understanding of how the budget process is developed mm -hmm. so that we trust the process mm -hmm. uh, you know because it is what you just said like mm -hmm. I trust that you sat down with the principal at such and such school mm -hmm. and that they presented you with you know actual a numbers reasonable and reasonable, you know and that yeah. you and because we we do get accused of not auditing the budget mm -hmm. um, but I know from your explanation of the budget process to me is essentially every department gets audited in its own sense every single year we never just say well this is sure, what the art department had last year we'll just give them this and three percent right yeah. yeah well that kind of goes back to what we were talking about with the financials was that as I'm looking at third quarter expenditures, I'm spending the entire month of January into February looking at current year expenditures because that's what we're using to inform our request for next year. Mm -hmm. And so each line item has this process in my mind of, you know, let's see what we're doing. Are we going to do that same thing next year? Do we like it? Are we doing something different? Why are we doing that? You know, well, how come it costs this much this year, and, and you think it might cost that much next year? Is that enrollment? How many kids do you have? What's the formula? All of that really super detailed stuff is being applied before you guys even get your hands on it, right? So then the question is, if there are areas where you have a particular interest or a wonder, can we hone in on those so that we can um, delve down into the underlying process in that area, which then you sort of expand out and say, oh yeah, okay, so if that's how they did it with that account, then it's probably how they did it with this mm -hmm. one over here. Right. And you, as, as April said, you understand how the, the thing was built from the ground up. Because and for me, sometimes it felt like a superficial conversation from my end. Yeah. Because I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I don't have that information, and then without getting into a lot of like excruciating, monotonous, you know, probably obnoxious questions to try to under, understand that because right. because you know when we're talking about it's easy to feel that we're twelve degrees of separation uh -huh. away from these uh -huh. decisions. And maybe we should be to some extent, but without knowing that, how do you how do you make have a good conscious. conversation? And then I think it honestly, to bring the conversation full circle, it's magnified one more time when we then go and present it to town council. Mm -hmm. Because we're saying, trust us, uh -huh. because we trust Kate, uh -huh. and Kate trusts, you know, uh -huh. the pro and we all trust this process, and we're asking you to understand that we've done our due diligence, you know, starting all the way down here, and now we've worked to this final moment. And it's difficult, I mean, it's difficult yeah, it's as true. a town councilor to say, yeah, okay. I, I think you guys are on the ball. Like, yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, and without without having the opportunity to be in the room from which that first conversation, to, which speaks to Sarah's point, but even even deeper, 
because you're in the room having a conversation with the leadership team and reading their budget proposal and saying, okay, yeah, I get it, but you're not in the room with me when I'm having a conversation with Allison about our line items and saying, well, tuition's going to be going up, but this we can cut a little bit over here and this will be poll cost, and, you know. Right. Um, you know, what would be good key is like, I don't really need to go through all that, but if, if there's like, I know this year there was a lot of questions about athletics, mm -hmm. I anticipate that being. Yeah, and actually the athletics one would be easy because I don't have a revised version of what actually landed in the athletics budget, but I have Mike's original proposal, which is, you know, what's in each of the line items that he asked for, which isn't exactly what came to you, but I could give you even a, just a copy of it to look at, so you can see the level of detail that he's going into when he brings it to us. Mm -hmm. So that would be and that might help me too to just to get that to understand yeah. the process. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. some sort of a timeline for the goal defining yeah. or, or right and sooner than later yeah right? not waiting sure. until you get in the heat of the moment yeah. and everybody's kind of fraught. Yeah. and that's actually one thing I had on here was to look at the full timeline because mm -hmm. I think uh, well we need to look at the timeline and we also need to update our policy because how we operate is different than what's in the policy yeah um, yeah I noticed you had a note about the draft budget being for first reading in there, and I wanted to um, <coughs> grab onto that because even our internal timeline on the school side, where we struggled a little bit this last year with being able to present you with something before we presented the budget. Yeah. And you know what's that going to look like? And I 100% I agree. It's just a question of what it is, you know. Sure. What is it that we're coming up with before we come up with the final presentation? Yeah, I think that's what you came up with, right? Wasn't it that that you showed? Them that was what we that was what we started with because it was giving you the the high level, but it doesn't do what Alicia's talking about, which is to get you into the baseline um, level services stuff. So maybe there's a way to incorporate some of that as well. Yeah, just need to make sure we are in accordance with our own policies on. The, what, all that, what's so. being delivered when? Yeah. Well, another and there's thing that seems out of whack to me is like I think the first reading, the second reading should be moved up because we're we've already gone into voting before the yeah. town council even votes on it. Yeah. So we really need to look, look at the whole entire system. Yeah. And and it it was. That. We used to have a vote. We used to try to have a vote. We brought the budget out earlier. We brought the budget out in March instead of the first week of April. And then we shifted that because we were trying to get more accurate information. Like subsidy wasn't out. Yeah. Insurance, you didn't have a wild guess. Um, so we were delivering a first reading budget that was absolutely the wild guess. Yeah. Um, but if voting starts that much earlier, because of the absentee voting. And absentee voting, or what do we call it? It's early, early voting. That wasn't a thing either. It was only absentee ballots, so you had to like prove that you were going to be out of town. Oh, yeah. So it was a much smaller portion of the community that was voting that way. Still, but it was still weird. I agree. That can, that can the fact make that they have, yeah. the fact that people are in possession of ballots before. Before there's They can't turn them vote. in, but they still take them out with the intention to vote. Right, which means that they don't have the updated question on there. Right. It's just yeah, it's crazy. It so is peculiar. That down. And there's there's a lot of elements to that because there's some stuff yeah. in the charter, there's some stuff in the statute, there's some stuff where town and school are supposed to, how they're supposed to interface. And even that can get murky because we've had lawyers looking at it and saying, oh, the 
the way that the statutes were written around school budget development and the referendums, it was written more for SAUs, for like multi-community yeah. districts. Yeah. And it doesn't translate very well to the town council mm -hmm. municipal school yeah. district format. So even there is a little bizarre. No, I think that. Um, thank you for the way you, uh, both of you, did organize this meeting. I it was sort of like, oh, is this going to be helpful? But I think it was. So thank you. So my goal is also all. Well, sh sure, I mean, you guys have this, but kind of run through the same process with town council, and instead of us going through like this, we can just share with them what we've covered and some of the themes and uh, ask them to to basically slot in and do the same. And then out of there, we will hopefully have a list of here are like the immediate actions we can take, and here are like the workshops that we need to have and things that we need to discuss. The town council has not had so a similar meeting to this. My understanding was the one that they had a couple weeks ago was to do this. But, um, when Don called me yesterday, yeah. he said that they did not. Okay, so, so they're coming. This. So they're coming into a joint meeting without the same level of preparedness. So the thing continues. But did they go over their third quarter report? <laughs> I really would like to advocate for not. Okay, I'll send you. Well, at the very least, we could put it at the end of the meeting. Yeah, so I that just depending don't... on how the conversation goes, because I think this is so much more critical about yes, our relationship for, for and how we work together. Meeting. I right. just don't see unless somebody can advocate and and make a compelling argument for why the town council needs to see the school boards or the school department's quarter three financial report. Yes. <laughs> and note, note that they do get that information as a department of the town. Right. The town's financial include the school department. And not for nothing um, in respect to our own time, we literally do not Just need to see the town's Q3 financials. Oh, yeah. yeah. So like that so is true. not yeah, maybe we can for we, the maybe we can refine all the time too if right. that's the case so we don't sit through that's what I mean like yeah, if they you. if they have other that's business good. to conduct yeah. that's yeah, we that's fine but it for doesn't seem like it would be relevant started. to us yeah. and I think they should also be prepared with some of these things so that they're not just seeing it oh, looks good whatever you guys want <laughs> well whatever <laughs> or, we came up or, with <laughs> is great isn't it? Right? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Sarah. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming in. Muggy day. Yeah, honestly, today was a fun. A vacation day. Vacation day. Uh, you got a vacation day? No way. I thought I had a vacation this week. How's your dad? Good. She's better. Good. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Should I go get them? Ask yeah. Them. Huh. Sandy in August, so so we should definitely try because we'll want to see what we've learned. Just a little intro. Yeah. And some, uh,